Christ. Has begun. Man, we have to be well dressed for this interview. Damn it. Uh, look at that shoot. suit. Look at that suit tie and vest combo. That, that's, that is that is that is corporate 101. Look at that. That's uh, I know it's but... like how to write how to write Dan, like Dan. You know, welcome to my seminar. <laughs> It's a lovely time. Rise and shine, my sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. Deadly Grounds Coffee has the richest, smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, <laughs> it's scary. Hey, hey, welcome to Splash Pages. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here. We have a great show scheduled for you, as always. Drew, your face was lighting up there. I'm sorry. That's the first time I'm seeing it. Like, it, it almost distracted me from the puzzle I've been trying to solve. So just get, get to I'm gonna try. I'm going to figure this out. Just you know, <laughs> give me a second. Awesome. Jar Jar. That was the most beautiful thing I've seen all day. Oh. I know, and then you looked in the mirror. I, I well, <laughs> if I if I kept a mirror up here, I'd be busy all day. But anyways, happy Tuesday! It's Splash Pages. We've got a great guest coming up. So right over to you, Carrie. Hey everybody! Happy Tuesday. Um, Drew, I I got one of these too. I, if you, <laughs> what do you yeah, you mess around with a little bit. I think. Oh, wait, wait a second. I don't think you should There's press that. I think I heard. No. I think I heard something like a like a like a puzzle box, like a like a ballerina box, but it's definitely demonic. Definitely bad. We're we're going to hell. There, there's some bells tolling back here, but I'm gonna, mm. I'm gonna put that. Oh wait. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, we broke the box. Oh god. Oh boy. <laughs> we have a new box. New box now. New configuration. But hey, how's it going, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Splash pages, got that already covered. Squirrel Wrangler here. Um, we have got an incredible guest. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people know him and go to the shows to see him as a Daredevil writer. And while Daredevil, yes, is great and Daredevil Black Suit, which is being re-released um, under his name, is fabulous. We are bringing him here tonight, not just for that, but also talk about some of his other scarier stuff along the Clive Barker realm that he took with Epic Comics and his Hellraiser and Nightbreed Jihad. And I would like to welcome Dan Chichester. Yay! 
<laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. I, I mean, I feel like I should have cued the Christopher Young music, you know, with you all playing with your puzzle boxes. And that uh, that opening was indeed awesome. And who's tried that coffee is what I want to know. So uh, that's the mm. real question. I, I, Delicious. Oh, tasty. I drink it on a regular basis. Uh, Jar Jar, are you drinking it right now? No, but I'd like to pretend I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Well done. That's like I blow on this and pretend it's tea. You know, yeah. just like cool. he, he, wants to get, he wants to get as much of that sweet sponsor money as possible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know. Thank um, you guys for having me on. Oh, oh thank no. you for being on. This is great. Like, it's a big night for us. Yeah. It's New so intro, sad. first guest. Carrie's just as pumped as the, she was the first time. So this is going great. Right. So oh, she's the squirrel wrangler, and she introduced me. Does that make me a squirrel? Is that how that works, or did I pick up on that correctly? We're all squirrels. Oh, we're all squirrels. Okay, I, we're all squirrels, and she just makes sure that, like, every now and again, that we stay on track. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't really Red, work Reddit, all the time. Red Oscar pops up and says, "You're squirreling off over here. Get back, come on." But yeah, he also he's an alcoholic, so there's he's nice. Yeah. Nice. It, yeah, yeah. You, I, I, I hear some I, Danny I, Torrance well, voices, you know, in the in the future. One hundred percent. But He's, so 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 we so again like again Dan, we were all talking about it, and it's funny because Jeremy brought up. He was like, "Man, is there ever a time this guy isn't asked a daredevil question?" Like, I feel like. He's been daredevil to oh, death. Yeah. And I, I watched a million interviews with you for this, and my God. And, and you're like, God, does he have any different answers? He says the same <laughs> damn thing every single I, time. I would, like, too, though. Like, yeah. I, I, would, I would get into my groove and just be like, hey, this is what they want to hear. I'll give it to them. I, I, I mix like, it up. I try to. Yeah. And and it's actually funny because when we we posted your interview that, that we you and me had done at Terrific Con, Yep. Leo brought up. He was like, "Wow, did why did you shut him down about about uh, advertising his Kickstarter?" I was like, "I forgot that we can do that. I I didn't." <laughs> and, I, and, and I was like, "Oh, I felt like I didn't realize I did it because I was like in the middle of a no hitter uh, with, with interviews. You were like my." like my 10th in a row i was running on so much adrenaline yeah, drew was on fire that day i, I literally my uh, to quote nick cage in a movie carrie hey it's like i felt like my skull was on fire you know? <laughs> um and and leo pointed out and i and i was like wait a second review the minutes oh shit i did say that i was like man i i felt so bad because you're, you're 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 so polite and and accommodating and i was just like like, do you fuck over the guy who wrote Hellraiser? That's like how you die. <laughs> well, dude, that's it's. Strange. I still have, I still have some pull with the dead of night. It's true. Yeah, You're okay. Yeah. You're safe. We we yeah. all we're all friends. Yeah. So so small apologies, everybody. Make sure you know what you're talking about before you say no on camera, because then Leo will call it out. So thanks, Leo. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I can't believe you did that. I must have missed it. Oh, I, it? I I cut it out. It was, oh, okay. it, was, it, was, it was it was very fast, hey, but I remembered listen, it. I coming like, oh, coming off that panel, like we've talked about before, you knew who I was, which was a big step up from what I've been <laughs> an hour before. So, could you please oh. tell me about your contributions to uh, Moon Knight? Moon Knight, yes. <laughs> <laughs> my contributions to Moon Knight. Wasn't the Moon Knight TV show great? Let's not revisit that. Uh, oh, they, it was part of that panel. Oh no! That, I, no, I said you were part of that panel. I didn't. Yeah, know that. me, was, Howard it, Mackey, was... and Terry Cavanaugh. We had we had we had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I, I heard it was wonderful. I heard the 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 panel host and everything was just right on right on point. It, In the groove, stay it, on target. It, it, it was like Jeremy. It was like watching three Marvel uh, magicians all just up there saying like well this is how we did the trick okay like there's like you could do it too except you weren't us so it was you know if we gave them all like if they all had unlimited beer we would have got you know marvel after dark <laughs> that would have been good that that's they should fill those tumblers with something aside from water you're right yeah exactly I, I love mackie pulling up his phone to start googling did i really do that <laughs> Terry oh no, he, like, was, he was he was he was seeing <laughs> if he could get travel out of that that conference hall right there. He was like, "Could I book a trip out of this room?" Like that's what yeah. 
like and and then when we had him on the show it was it was one of those where no that's led literally who he is the the carrie would bring up he was like i did that i was like okay sure yes and like yeah no it was great i'm like okay well if it was great then yeah i totally did that and i was like that mackie you know in the land of make-believe as long as you go go along with it so so it like i said uh before we show i had never i had i i was unfamiliar with the night breed so mm -hmm. I had to do the research. So I watched the movie, mm -hmm. um, and I also rewatched Hellraiser because that's a classic. I, I love that 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 world, and and I was like, wow, the scope of, of your crossover and just two issues mm -hmm. was crazy. Because nowadays, and we've talked about this on the show, like if they've made it now, this would be like, what do you think, Jar? Like seven, eight issues and, at least, at least. And you did it in two. Might even like, get I mean, there were big issues, yeah, but like the storytelling, I was like, wow, this is a big story. And then your artistic create um, collaborator, that Paul was Johnson, yeah, yeah, fabulous, incredible, beautiful, beautiful work. Like, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like bloody, evil, gory, yeah, yeah. and beautiful yeah. at the same yeah. time. I Absolutely. mean, just shockingly beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. And and uh, yeah, you know, it was a. A crystallized experience like in in so many ways um i uh, will get into all whatever details you want but i i actually felt like it was the perfect length you know for for what it needed to be i did not feel constrained i think i didn't mm -hmm. make uh some of my you know I'll, I'll often torture myself and say oh i i didn't quite stick the landing on something or um or you know i i rushed the ending or that kind of kind of thing and this mm -hmm. just even though there's just a, excuse me, fuck ton of stuff going on a in ton. this uh, in this story, um, it all just feels like the exact right uh, combination. And then uh, the ending to me is just lyrical. The ending came to me so early on, and uh, Pinhead was just like whispering in my ear, just you know that Doug Bradley voice saying, mm -hmm. "This is the last line I'm going to say." Like I knew the last line of that story. I think the minute I sat down to write it, it was mm -hmm. just it was that kind of experience had you written hellraiser before any hellraiser stuff before this no i i had never seen the movies or no yes i had a lot to do with the hellraiser <laughs> well, well i was just wondering how how, I, how you guys had yeah. to do these i had i had written uh, i had obviously i'd seen the movies and then i was uh, uh instrumental uh, clive i think at one point gave me the uh the moniker of uh the godfather of the the clive Barker's Hellraiser comic, uh, me and Archie Goodwin, I think, were the co-godfathers. So I had, I, I'll go out on a limb and say I co-created the comic uh, mm -hmm. with Archie and Clive, and um, and so uh, had brought that to life and figured out how we're going to translate the movies into the comic anthology. And then I was the regular editor for a couple of issues, and then I was the consulting editor for most, if not all, of its run, and then uh, would also contribute a number of of stories. Uh, to um, the Hellraiser uh, anthology along the way. You know, I, I didn't overstay my welcome, but every now and again, I'd, I'd raise my hand and say, I've got an idea. Can I? Can oh. you just get me in without pitching it? And most of the time they did. So, oh, <laughs> so I was pretty familiar with the, the world. And, uh, and then I had also launched the Nightbreed comic when I was an editor and um and and had the smarts to bring on alan grant and john wagner um and uh jim bakey so we really went a team on the comic book adaptation um which was unusual usually you do comic book adaptations of movies and you're sort of like who's available who's under a rock who's waiting in the hallway and we went for some top tier talent and got them and they really leaned very heavily into it and i think made that adaptation uh really sing and then when they ran out their run and the book was going to continue, that was probably the most singularly shameless moment in comics for me because I went into the editor uh, who was going to take over the book and I said, I'm I'm taking over this book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, Dan. There's just this oh. moment here. I, I yeah. have to yes. tell you, uh, being a Hellraiser fan, this, this this moment killed me because because I don't think and I've watched enough Hellraiser to say that I'm a decent fan. 
Like I know exactly where in my mind it just we went off the rails. And I have very little love for the remake they did. I do I do like as we coined it the Hulu Razor. Um, I, did, I did like that, but this moment, and I said this to Carrie, I was like, this is my top five favorite moments. And right. Leo, if you, if you can blow this up, I feel like I, I have to try reading this in the Doug Bradley voice <laughs> because I've never not only seen, like I've seen Pinhead be snarky because he's that, but holy crap, I've never seen him insult somebody <laughs> like this. And I, 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 I died. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank, you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Seriously. Like, like it's, it, it was, it was, it was the thing that I loved is that it was said. And then Alistair has that moment where he's like, wait a second, what? And then it, his lover's like, he just read called the comment, me. Drew. What? Read I'm it, sorry. Drew. Oh. Read, read it. I'm, I'm trying to, oh, okay. Yours is a rectum by which the abyss itself pales in comparison <laughs> and then you know uh is that so well let me tell you something what did he say i think he just called you hell's biggest asshole <laughs> <laughs> like like i i i died like I, I actually paused and took a minute to let that sink <laughs> into what's left of my brain i was just like See, yes. you can't, that that's what I mean. You can't write lines like that. They're they're channeled. I, I really feel they are. Like when characters um, work and they kind of come to life for you, mm -hmm. you're just sort of like doing this keyboard Ouija board sort of thing, and just uh, you know they're they're telling yeah. you what what they're going to say. And that that was another moment I felt uh, that that just came forward so early on and so quickly i couldn't i couldn't write this book fast enough to mm -hmm. try to keep up with um what they almost all wanted to say and do uh, yeah i i just i i i could thank not thank you thank you for to... calling that up though i'm just well, admiring the artist leo's flying by it yeah yeah, well, yeah we reviewed the book, that... we reviewed the book very quickly so this is slash <laughs> So if you see something, call it out, please. <laughs> One other thing that I noticed that uh, you know, Paul did, I'm assuming by design, and like at this point it's at night, so there's you know, some kind of blues and stuff in here, but oftentimes most of the scenes involving the night breed have very warm mm -hmm. colors, a lot of yellow and red and orange and things going over them, like, like right in here. Right, but uh, in hell, it's very—it's the cold and the blues, and even the yellow that surrounds Leviathan is somehow a cold, muted yellow. I I it think that was in. very intentional on Paul's part because, as we we sort of talked about last time, because we we did dive pretty deep into hell and Hellraiser and such. You, yeah, you know the 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 conceit, you know, the thing that Clive. And I arrived at, you know, and, you know, as we, we discussed what I had done on Hellraiser and what we had done is we created the Hellraiser comic. And then as I got into writing Nightbreed and understanding what, what Nightbreed was and what was the differenti differentiation between the two, right? Um, his hell was um, uh, contradicting most expectations. You know, hell is pandemonium. Hell is disorder. Hell is all those things. His hell was discipline. Right. His hell was the extraordinary, extreme precision, you know, of of order, order beyond all other things. And the night breed, by contrast, were disorder. I mean, that obviously comes through with a two by four in the story. So I think that that sense of um, of the the warmth and the organic qualities of the colors when it's about the night breed uh, and the the pale precision, if you will, uh -huh. um, uh, Paul and I didn't really ever talk about that, um, but I, I, it felt so right uh, when you see it, and and you guys are picking up there, even there in that shift right there, as you're kind of going, you know, right as hell kind of comes in, um, mm -hmm. you know, the color does the shift to the palette really quickly. Yeah, it's true. So, um, gorgeous. there was actually another thing I had is is that um, it's actually kind of piggybacking this theme that that hopefully I'm actually hoping gets picked up in horror because it's kind of something that um i thought of when reading this is that i don't know if you saw the the movie uh, the predator movie prey which yeah, had, i loved it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and i i saw somebody who was like wow we need to do more movies like this where it's like horror franchises in the past and it was like uh like uh, i'm not exactly i don't remember there was like three pitches 
But the one that I loved was it was like the ancient Greeks and a puzzle box. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow. Like it was just mm-hmm. one of those where, yes, please. Um, especially because, as you know, uh, in your run, history is a big part of Hellraiser. Um, especially sure. Could because, be. mm-hmm. as we've seen in the other movies, that it's not just modern day that the, the Cenobites have been finding co- converts for hundreds of years, maybe even thousands. So yep. there's there's big history there. So I guess the question I had is, is reading this, did you ever have like a story, like you're, you're back to writing Daredevil right now as part of mm-hmm. the Marvel nostalgia. If they ever had an idea, would you ever like, how do I say this? Would you ever pitch like a, a lost Hellraiser story or or something like that? Would like something you'd be like, oh, you know what? That's a good idea. Like you're a little, hi, I have an idea. I have, I have oh yeah, I mean, I I I love these worlds. I mean, I I I enjoy the heck out of them. No pun intended. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so if there was ever an opportunity to kind of return to them, um, I would. Uh, I'm sure I could cook up something. You know, not necessarily mm-hmm. even thinking about it like as a lost Hellraiser story. It's just simply le- you start to lean into that. I mean, I think Prey obviously worked, you know, great as a, a, that predating history thing. But Prey is also just a great movie, right? Right. It's just it's just a really well executed movie with mm-hmm. really strong characters right. and not just trying to repeat the same old formula. That's the success of a Prey or right. any story. You know, you know, it's the people who are going to get lost in it and sort of say, just like they get lost in Barbie, and they says, "Great, let's make a magic eight ball movie." You know, you know, it's not like saying every movie needs to be part of a franchise and we're going right. to historically operate it. That could be a great movie, too. I'm not saying right. that it couldn't be. Right. But Prey was a revelation because, wow, you just like had an extraordinarily strong leading character. They're, mm-hmm. they're clever. They're they're not just fodder. Um, right. And so I think that one of the things that makes this work for me or made it work for me, mm-hmm. you know, was this wasn't a murder by numbers thing right, right. it was not the 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 night breed uh wiping the floor with the centibites and it was not the centibites wipe oh those were looking at this axe <laughs> somebody's getting some wiped there but good good stopping point but um you know i love them both right and so i didn't have a, a horse in this race except to tell a good story right so there was this shifting allegiances if you will you know, mm-hmm. to kind of go back and forth uh, between them. And then again, finding that moment when I realized, well, Baphomet's a god and and they need a god on their side. And, <laughs> you know, these things just came together um, in this in this way. And then it not being, you know, as you were going at the beginning of this, you know, not a, not, hey, we're pals now. No, it's uh, no, convenience, yeah. uh, allegiance of convenience. Yeah. Um, a couple panels uh, or a couple pages up there. Um, they you don't have to go up, Leo. It's fine. Uh, when no. the chatter catches <laughs> the axe in his teeth. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and they go over and refer to him as Nikolantikunle. If I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not Aztecan, so giving it my best shot. But um, so cool. This is this is I'm nerding out on something, but uh, he is one of the Aztecan gods of the dead. <laughs> And mm-hmm. one of his other names that he goes by or another avatar of him translates into broken face. Now, is that why mm-hmm. he was given that name? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was did, definitely. Uh, did, did you do that up. or did Clive do that? I wasn't sure. No, there. I did all the namings here. I'm going to okay. take credit for um, it. And if Clive <laughs> ever gets on and disputes me, then I will go with Clive, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> okay. this. I will, I will always err on the awesome. side of giving Clive deference, but um. It, and how uh, do you pronounce it? <laughs> I have no freaking clue. I mean, don't even know. I mean, I, I mean, I was such a mythology nerd and demon nerd, and you know, Carrie, you were, you know, I think you you posted uh, something about like all those demonology books I was putting out. Those oh, yeah. were like I've had some of those since since these days. Uh, others, mm-hmm. you know, I just I just keep buying new ones. I don't know why. Um, but uh, you know, this would be my my research, my bread and butter. And so I would find these things that I had gathered up over time. And as I started to think about now I need to create the shock troops of hell 
on who's on whose side, who's on Pinhead side, who's on the rebel side, if you will, um, and starting to kind of um, build them out. Uh, then I wanted something more than just simply chatterer and butterball and that sort of thing. So yeah. who 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 sounded like something, you know, and then doing a little bit more digging and a little bit more research and then saying, all right, I'm not going to go on a deep dive on Aztec religions here, but yeah, that looks like that looks like that could be that. Or at least what somebody what an Aztec culture knew of that creature or thing or cenobite at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Leo, that page right there, uh, up a little bit, I think, but the one that had the, all the orange across it. it the, the, the full page, buddy. The, the, the yeah. splash the, page. Um, the, the, sorry. the splash page. There we go. This one is super important. They're looking into uh, Pinhead's head to see what's going on, and we have the mm -hmm. whole story behind Demolay and the Knights Templar and how everything ties in together in this. And it's all done. Oh God, this is just, it's an amazing story panel. Um, the, the way everybody looks into it and then just pinhead down at the very bottom having his say, but mm -hmm. um, how they could see all that in his brain. I just, I, sorry, for those of you who haven't read it yet, do, but this is a very important thing to know about. The Knights Templar are involved in this and Jeremy, but um so i'm gonna make him but oh, you're uh, gonna make me? i'm gonna make you but but this oh, is boy. a very important page and you really gotta check it out and he did so well with his art oh my god but, I, sorry I to interrupt. that was just geek, was like, geek out on my my work i rarely have read it this one is one of the few i've reread and you guys are doing me a treat because i do i do love them these lines <laughs> truth like the divine can be exquisite and it's hurt I, again i can't write that that's just like a a channeled moment but um what i think is interesting about paul as an artist here too is um he evokes doug's face or pinhead's face without you know mimicking it right sometimes the danger i think of movie adaptations again is is there is that you know that that attempt to sort of capture an actor's likeness. And then it has that very stilted quality that a lot mm -hmm. of uh, film TV adaptations of things have. And yet this feels so of the character and of Doug without it being it at the same time. It's so yeah. its own thing. Yeah, I, really, really terrific artist. And, yeah. and one more thing that I like to point out, and then I'm gonna shut up because I feel like I wanna give Jeremy and Leo a chance to talk. Um, oh, yeah, I, they're on the I, show too. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. <laughs> um, I also love the idea that you that 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 the Cenobites have an armory, like they have uh, somebody right. the weapons. And I was just thinking, I was like, you know what? It, it was kind of like when you have a, a like a, a part of history filled in that you're mm -hmm. like, you know what? I we kind of took that for granted, but that was explained. And I was like, this is a good answer. Like, like you wouldn't think like you're like yo. Where did all those chains come from? Like, <laughs> if they had a weapon, where, where would they come from? Like, that's not just magic. Like, someone made that shit. Like, so I'm just mm -hmm. thinking to myself, like, reading, like, we just passed it. And I was just like, yeah, they would have an armory and they would totally have an armorer. So, right. And I, I just find yeah. it great how civilized hell is. <laughs> like, it's it, very, it's very civilized. It's, yeah, it, it, there's you, so many rules and regulations, and everything's very tight knit. Like P Pinhead keeps a, a, a tight ship, runs a tight ship. Um, <laughs> but it's interesting, yeah. you know, uh, Drew, what you're saying there, because yeah. I think that this also, you know, not really super consciously, but this um, this sort of reflects, I think, something we were talking about last time, which is the process of doing the anthology fueled this book in mm -hmm. a lot of ways, because I was able now to lift from newer characters that had been created along the way, like Atkins, who was the, you know, the armorer, mm -hmm. and other characters that were, that were created by other people and other Hellraiser stories, which right. had enriched the Hellraiser universe. Mostly I, I did most of the heavy lifting and the Nightbreed stuff, but then I could, I could bring them in here for either small or semi-significant roles 
which you know was the which was what we really wanted to do with the Hellraiser series. Right. We wanted to kind of open the universe up, and I, I think this was a um, no matter who had done this, and I can't right. imagine who else would have done this. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's that that's the that's the uh, the tribute you know to the world that that we were building because Clive led us. Right. And and the last thing I will say is I also enjoyed that this book really kind of I felt restored the the somewhat neutrality of the Cenobites because in the first two movies. You know, you have that that famous line like angels to some, demons to others. There's mm-hmm. that kind of ambiguity that then like around I'd say the third movie, we just went, they're evil. It's just evil. Right. Right. You know, right. I feel like with your book, you got that sense like we are not what we do can be perceived as evil, but you rationalize like we are about order. That that yeah. within our evil there is structure, mm-hmm. there is purpose. And then the, the for the night breed, we are chaos attempting to find law. Like Midian was law. And when Midian fell, we are anarchy once again because we are without a base. We were without an, an anchor. We are a floating ship in the night. And of course, to the Cenobites, this is the the worst thing ever. So that's right. the, the, the fight. So, but back to the, my point being is I really enjoyed that because I felt like I feel like it's so easy in horror movies, like you you have that, this is bad, you know, but with Clive and the Cenobites and Pinhead and all that, you had that, that, that in, there was that interpretation. They could be evil to people who don't understand, but to some who want their knowledge, they are considered good. So again, it's, it's, it's all about perception, you know? Well, that, that, that clues back into the, you know, the initial promise of the first movie, which, mm. you know, certainly has some, some flaws to it, but I mean, is, is, is buying away an, an amazingly original vision. And, and the thing that always stuck with me from that was, um, and I don't remember the specific line, but I mean, you know, essentially, you know, we are agents of experience, right? We are here to bring you an experience, right. you know, what you are either prepared for or not, uh, you know, but that's what we're bringing you. And how you perceive that experience, uh, uh, pleasurable, painful, uh, Mm -hmm. whatever, is up to you. And where are you ready? Where are you on the scale, right? You know, and that that sort of thing. And and I would just, uh, for what it's worth, um, counter, but it's it's your view, so it's totally legitimate, and that's how you're interpreting the story. But I don't see. I don't think that Midian was was order and structure so much as just we just want to live. Right, the nightbreed just want to live, and that's sort of the organic. You know, they're a commune. They're a bunch of hippies. They're a bunch of like you know monstery hippies. And 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 uh, yeah. Archie Goodwin was the you know I, I believe I said this last Even time. You know, was the one who had the thing. epiphany about um what's that, George? Jeremy? I was saying you even had uh what's her name sitting there strumming the the guitar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. So. But um, but you know, he's the one who's sort of like said they're the x-men right they're they're they've got extraordinary powers and they and they just kind of want to live you know they just want their equal due and uh-huh. instead they're being persecuted and prosecuted and everything else and uh and um you know so that to me was the goal ticket early on of like how do we approach this as an ongoing book right and, and so they're they're they just want to live you know strum their guitar um you know avoid eating human meat and uh Yep. And just get on. That's that's yeah. one of the best. Okay, for all of this, I grant you the <laughs> breaking the law and eating. The- <laughs> <laughs> just this Meat. once. Just this once. Just once. He, he, went right. he, went. he didn't even hesitate. He went right in. He oh, was yeah. like, he was like, what? It, it, was, it was a happy meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was smiling the whole time. You became a choice. Uh-huh. <laughs> So, Leo and Jeremy, if you'd like to talk, please. Oh, I've been talking. Come on. Well, I, say. I feel like I've been do, mean do you have? Do you have any bias in any of this, Dan? Like, who did you know right away how you were going to end it? Um, You mean bias? Like, how is it going to, like, settle yeah, out? Like, I, I mean, I knew it wasn't, or not new, but uh, the ending is very, uh, how to put it, uh, 
it, it fit right very well. It, it was just like a classic kind of like end to a movie almost. And, oh yeah. And it, it, did you have that already planned out? Yeah, this thing came to me in the in the whitest heat of whitest heat. This was lightning in a bottle. I mean, I really saw this thing uh, fleshed out, as you will, uh, in such a complete way uh, very early on. Um, uh, you know, the 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 Knights Templar stuff took a little bit more work uh, to figure out the specifics around that, but um, but there, I knew the big big beats of it really quickly. Was there a reason you used uh, Jock Demolay as the the, the night I cannot remember why I'm sure if I went back in and looked if I had those notes and research anymore but it 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 struck me I, I know I researched it and but I, I couldn't only tell why right now. as a kid I was part of a group uh that was based off of Jacques de Malay and uh, okay yeah it's it, as soon as I saw it I, I was like oh okay now I can connect something here <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about these guys with these pins and these weird you <laughs> oh know my moon God. face I, people I, but Dan, I, I, I'm sitting there, I'm like, he seems like such a refined gentleman. What has he got me reading here? <laughs> <laughs> it gets more and more twisted. But, but really my, my my bias um, was really, again, just to tell a good story. I mean, I, I, I knew that, I you know, I wasn't going to kill Pinhead. I wasn't going to destroy Pinhead. Yeah. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do a Pinhead versus everybody story. So I had to introduce people worse than Pinhead. Like Pinhead was was not a good guy, but um, uh, you know, once Clive charged me with this thing, you know, he was like, "So what about that Nightbreed Hellraiser crossover? What do you mean, what about that Nightbreed Hellraiser crossover? What are you talking about? Like, you know, well, the one you're going to write. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, and and then your wheels just start turning. Um, but I I had affection again for these characters. Um, and I wanted to use Pinhead especially as the representative of that next level of, a mom, and I'm not going to try and do my Doug Bradley impersonation, oh. you know, of experience, right? That's, that's, he's, he's the, the face of, and the representation of what hell represents, what hell re represents with that next level of pleasure and pain and, and ecstasy and, and, uh, and uh an order so he has to then have something worse than him to mix things up and and i and i guess i could have found worse things on the nightbreed side but um once that order discipline friction started to happen um you know it really uh you know the the title was probably you know three times too intellectual you know for for its own good but you know the holy war aspect of it um you know, predating anything else, you know, where that word has become uh, perceived in different ways, uh, you know, was was straight on perfect for this, right? Um, mm. You know, praying won't save you. It's a holy war. I, I love that line on the back of it. You know. <laughs> I, I love when he, when Alistair first jumps in, when they're in the middle of deliverance from the curse of Nightbreed, return to ex from exile to test our faith. He's like, Hey, I want to do something about that. And he's like, "It is not your place yet to speak among the laity, Alistair. I can't. Oh, yeah. I can't do a pin at all. That time will not come for six thousand seven hundred and twenty-seven oh years, God. three months, five days, twelve hours, <laughs> twenty-two minutes, forty-eight seconds. It would seem you're out of order." Yeah, I love that. that. <laughs> like. Like that was that was the the best insulting and like again Pinhead just has you get you gave him some good zingers he just oh, yeah. withers he just withers yeah. it's kind of frightening that the the laity of hell there and the the you know the discipleship of hell runs better than the U.S. Congress I think at this point so um, <laughs> they, they have I slightly didn't know better Congress structure. was running at all yeah so 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 what's the, this. The, uh, this is the this is uh, his latest Kickstarter, Axel. Oh, okay, Axel's. And... Yeah. So yeah, you don't we... have to shift gear to this. You guys can keep on jihad. Oh, you know. Oh, I know no, we, we want to touch on this a little bit, especially because we're talking about order and hell. Yeah. And, and I feel it's a nice segue. We want to. Okay. You know, have right. you have you always been such a a, a, a lover of this kind of uh, mythology? 
I guess. Um, I mean, I was always a big fan of, of horror, you know, growing up yeah. and, and all through it. I mean, starting off with more classic horror and then expanding outwards yeah. into things. And, and I am just fascinated by the, the mythologies of hell. I, I mean, I think that came most directly uh, as you start to find, try to find um, uh, antagonists, you know, for stories when I was writing more um, horrific stories and, you know, let's draw from demonology and they don't necessarily have to be demons, but they might be your inspiration for it. Um, but then uh, certainly the Hellraiser work uh, took me down, um, you know, some interesting paths uh, and a lot of the research uh, into that. And then as I started on this story many, many years ago, mm -hmm. um, that took me even further down finding obscure books every now and again, and then suddenly realize, well, geez, I've got, 20 of these <laughs> I, I don't know that i'm going to get much more from buying more books at this point so, they're going to break so, into your house sometime and steal your library yeah, yeah. so my, my but, wife had them had me hide a lot of the books on the upper shelf when my kid was growing up so. that's fair so if you had to do like an elevator pitch for a axel's infernal that you're doing how what would that be you know uh, imagine there's not just one hell but there's many hells and there are many hells, right? You've got Aztec hells and Mesopotamian hells and Egyptian hells. And all of these hells want to be believed in, desperately want to be believed in. But some of them have fallen out of favor or about to fall out of favor. Everybody's not as popular as Dante's hell, but the underworld transportation authority is there to solve all that because they will express deliver hell to earth for these different hells by ship or by, by plane or by truck. And so uh, we follow the adventures of Necros Terminal, who is the dispatcher for the North American territory for the trucking division. And he has different drivers that have to deliver hell uh, from these different hells, have to deliver different damnation to earth, but they can only use humans to do this for various reasons. And so a young woman named Percy Cross uh, gets hijacked, Shanghai press gang, uh, seduced into having to become the co-driver of one of these rigs, Smoke and Sammy. So this is sort of her journey to hell and back and then back to hell and then back again in this course of these adventures with a more experienced driver named Virgil Shift. Uh, and so it's a very grindhouse, supernatural thriller, thrill ride in the spirit of a little bit Army of Darkness, a little bit Drag Me to Hell, uh, a little bit Sam Raimi, a little bit Good Place. Uh, not quite an elevator pitch, or maybe we're at the twentieth floor at this point, but uh, it's it's a it's a it's its own thing in that way, and I think pretty uh, exciting, and uh, and the real hell is going through Kickstarter, but that's another thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I it's dead to, sexy. I wanted to play this. Hopefully, you can hear. It. If you can't, let me know. Um, uh, it looks it, it's the most beautiful screensaver. No, I think it, I think the no, sound. We can't, but the images are beautiful. Leo. Oh, you, they are. oh you can't hear it. No, well, well, let let us watch it and imagine the words. I actually loaded it into the video clips. If you'd like to play it, from oh, there. you were able to grab it. Okay. Yeah. Of course, she's I'm I'm all I'm over this. Man. It all. It's ready, man. She, she wrangled the squirrels. Into I really a line like to idea. perform. Oh, I really like Bam. the idea that they're all hells are real, all hells are viable. It, it's oh. kind of like it, well, it's it, so much more interesting and rich. And then there's these ones that have like you've that have been forgotten totally, you know. Oh, that's and, and so in, in this world, like Dante's, you know, Dante's like the strip, not the strip mall, it's like the mall of like hells, right? The Dante's hell, the Christian hell, it's everybody's got that they've got the most mojo but then there's this poor little babylonian hell that's got like three you know <laughs> demons sort of begging for like a space on one of the trucks uh, and oh. and we've blown these stories out over many different storylines uh, mm -hmm. so this is the first storyline uh which will not reveal everything or every hell right. we just have to get, kind of get percy into this but the uh the objective uh and you know the goal would be to then get enough sort of mojo behind it that we'd be able mm -hmm. to tell these other stories, both bigger ones and even smaller ones. I've actually written, a, you know, like small eight page stories of just these guys making a very small delivery, you know, here and there. So everything doesn't have to be this big overblown thing. 
It can just be these little wonderfully twisted vignettes. It, I like that. And then the energy definitely has that like 90s vibe. Like, and I think I mentioned last time when you mentioned like Peter Bilts and everything, my <laughs> my brain, like my pop culture brain was like, oh God. Cause you know, I, cause at that time I was reading a lot of crossover comics, like uh, yeah. Freddy, Freddy versus Jason, uh, Jason versus Jason X, all these things. And I was just like, oh God, Dan, Peterbilt, please don't do a maximum overdrive crossover. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is no. Like, like no. I was like, that is a hell we don't need to return to. Like I, I don't know that there's enough cocaine in the world to to want to do a, a you know, <laughs> like yeah, I think I think Stephen King snorted it all up while he was directing that film. And we will try to find um, you more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I will say, Jar, that that when we we had um when we were interviewing Dan for the other one through the Owlite Network, which great interview, wonderful. Um, he had this beautiful splash page that I, I think it was like the truck that he described and they're driving on the highway and you just see all these different hells in the background. And it, and it was like, uh, it was like the, the choose your own adventure of your night. Right, 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 right. And I was just like thinking to myself, I was like, Oh dear God. Like, and again, like I, I grew up Catholic, so I, I'm used to the Catholic hell, but through my history majorness, I've know of other mythologies hells. I'm like, I was like, oh my god, each one works. You're like, holy fucking yeah. hell! No pun intended. And some of them are just, you know, some of them are just weird, desolate places, but they'd still be kind of interesting to sort of visit. You know, mm -hmm. some of them are super sedate. Some of them are are more twisted than anything, uh, you know, you could possibly uh, imagine. But yeah. um, uh, and some cultures don't really have much of one. You know, Jewish culture doesn't really have much of a hell to speak yeah. of you know and it's mm -hmm. in it's in its own way which surprised me as i was doing you know the research yeah i didn't because, know that yeah uh, i would figure the jewish faith would, would have like kind of like the catholic faith you know one of the supreme hells no, <laughs> no. i mean burn not, not for to eternity. that degree nope. in that way yeah the, 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 the hell is in what yahweh you know <laughs> inflicts upon the, the evildoers you know <laughs> like that old testament wrath like good oh Lord. yeah um but well, so speaking but, of evildoers i'm gonna be one right now and i'm gonna play this video this is a uh, short yeah we'll be back in 55 seconds 55 seconds here's what i know when you've lost your way it gets easy to lie about the hard truths my name is percy cross and i've done some sinful things i'd like to think they were for the right reasons but the way to hell is paved with good intentions. So if you're going to drive that road, you better be damn sure you pick a good ride. And we have the link to that so, up above or down below, depending on where you're you listening to us. If if Splash Pages was like Shark Tank right now, I'd be like, shut up and take my money. <laughs> Here's my money. <laughs> Here's my money. It's <laughs> fun. I mean, it's it's a it's a. I know it's a ball, and I don't say that about my stuff almost ever. And, and Carl's pulling out the stops, and um, and it's a. You know, we've lived with this, like I said before, for a long while, uh, in some cases too long a while, but the fact it still holds up and it continues to sort of generate new thinking and, you know, you, you sort of want stories like that to kind of get out in the world. So mm -hmm. uh, Kickstarter is its own beast, as I've discovered, uh, in its own way, and um, I'm learning how to navigate it, but, uh, but we didn't get the... Uh, Fund it in 48 hours sort of thing. So now you kind of keep the slog going and, and see where you get to. Well, it's a uh, mysterious beast, the Kickstarter. Yeah. How, like, and same with, like, sharing it that stuff on Facebook and stuff, like how the algorithm works and how to get people to see it. I have some posts that will be the most mundane thing, get, like, 50 likes on it, and then I'll post something that I'm really trying to push and share and get, like, three views. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. what the hell's I mean, going uh, on? I, I know from, I mean, I spent 20 odd years working in marketing. So 
I, you know, I know that you, 3% of the people, you know, will see anything you post, right? You think you have 500 followers and, oh, 500 people are going to see what I post today. No, 3% oh, no. of those people will see what you post. Yep. So, I mean, it is, um, it's, uh, but there is a big community of people, you know, working on Kickstarter, supporting people on Kickstarter. And I've gotten uh, really great tips as I've gone along, uh, you know, if they've kind of come in and they've said, Hey, do it this way or redo that reward and, and, uh, you know, uh, swap this out or put this image up. So uh, I'm continually retooling it and uh, seeing if we can tweak it, you know, a little bit more, get us over um, a finish line. And if we don't get over a finish line, then I have other plans in mind. So we'll, we'll go there. Well, I, I, I think Dan also kind of what you're saying is, is kind of what I feel we've seen more of in comic books these days is that while it used to be like the dream was working for the big two, which is, you know, still a really fun mm -hmm. thing to be able to do. I feel mm -hmm. like more of the joy is independent comics or, you know, Kickstarters where the creator owned option where you reap the benefits, but you also, you carry the risk, but you reap the benefits regardless. And we've seen it now where even big names um, in the industry, like uh, mm -hmm. we brought this up on the show, you have a lot of big comic book names are forming their own company. They're Ghost Machine, sure. the new sure. new Image Comics thing. So I think it's just like you said, like I, like just rewatching the trailer. Like I just kept thinking, like you know what, I I miss this. Like I I enjoy the fun uh, of mm -hmm. comics because I feel now it's just everything is so repetitive, and it almost feels like you just you've done it already. So it's like what more can you do? But you see this, and it's just it catches you like that's like the compliments to 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 this project you're working on because i'm like i really i'm like i was like you know what like this is great and guys you know this kind of remind me of um when we were um good boy garrett guns project mm. it's mm. like this idea shouldn't work but it's like john wick <laughs> so, because, because for that uh dan that was john wick but it's the reverse so it's the dog <laughs> i love it Getting oh, I love in. it, and he's in a set. No, I'm telling you, if you get a chance, check it out. Oh, it I definitely will. An awesome book. It's the dog is the assassin avenging his his owner. That's awesome. And that it's a nice little cartoon. It, it's a cartoon, and it's awesome because it's if you've especially watched the John Wick movies, yeah, it's a straight up homage, but in the best, most ridiculous way. So yeah, the first mm -hmm. comic almost follows the first movie. Yeah, like, straight but, through. But my That's point fabulous. of that is. It's just, it's that fun where I'm not just like, oh, they're trying to be the next uh, Frank Miller. They're trying to be the next one. I was like, no, they're just mm -hmm. having a ball with a baller story. And it's just great. And it's like, yeah. good, good Godspeed. Like, go. And, and that's what every creator wants to do, you know, in their own way and, and have a, a good time telling a story and sharing a story. Um, and and certainly there are tons of tools out there now where you can do it this you know in different ways you know mm. you just put it out on your own you could just invest a certain thing and just print it without even doing the kickstarter thing or the crowdfunding thing at all certainly any printing option allows you to produce a book that doesn't look like it's some uh uh you know mimeograph thing or um off the back of a vanity press it's going to look just as good as as anything else mm. um but it, it is it is work, right? There is that right. additional work. And I totally appreciate and respect the idea of just wanting to do the work sometimes. I just mm -hmm. want to tell the story, want to create the story. I'd like somebody else to pick up on this other stuff. But in this instance, uh, you know, made the decision, you know, with Carl Waller, my partner on this, you know, we talked about, should we, should we take it to publishers? Should we do this? Should we do that? And, you know, various things led us to this decision to, to try it out this way. And, and um, uh, you know, learning things along the way. So that's what you do. So been what, one of the biggest uh, challenges to overcome right now with Kickstarter. Um, their design thing is pretty awful. I mean, uh, yeah. laying the page out is 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 surprisingly. Uh, I found kludgy. You know, I, I know digital software pretty pretty well. Um, I don't know if there's any type of software that's not digital. Um, it's like saying something super <laughs> exciting, but. Um, uh it's really kludgy so even going in and updating things and putting in rewards and doing that feels like a slog mm. i expected something a lot more uh elegant 
uh, in terms of being able to kind of get get stuff in and out. Um, ton of spam, which I wasn't expecting. Uh, navigating through a ton of like you oh, know, I can help you uh, sell everything. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, which is which is hysterical and. And, you know, it's just the thing of staying on top of it. It's it's like turning the crank and um, and uh, putting out new posts and, and reminding people. And, uh, you know, it could easily be a full time job, but it, it cannot be my full time job. I have to juggle that with, with other things. Uh -huh. um, and then there's that, um, you know, I think like we get enter the therapy, you know, session part of our program for, for a second. You know, there's that just that weird existential nonsensical dread of like, well, why isn't it funded yet? You, yeah. you know, I, I'm right. quote unquote, you know, I have some name value. Why didn't it, 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 it kick in right away? And, and this reason and that reason, not that I should be given, you know, some, um, you know, some, uh, uh, magic wand, you know, on my shoulder, but I was, I was, uh, maybe I psyched myself out because I did a lot of pre-work on this with a lot of professionals who I respect and I had them look at it and vet it, look at the page and look at what mm -hmm. they're asking and, and, you know, um, is it laid out the right way? Is it saying the right things? Are we asking the right amount of money? And they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's going to do great. And, uh, and then it's like, oh, well, and I'm hoping it still does do good, but you don't get that immediate thing. And then you're like, okay, am I doing something wrong? And I'm not, I don't think I am. Like, I think I'm yeah. doing everything I possibly can. And it's just the roll of the dice, right? It's yeah. like, what, what happens on this day when something terrible happens in the world or somebody else launches something else or people only have so much money, you know, to go around and, and back things. So mm -hmm. as I said, it's a matter of, um, uh, uh, I'd like it to happen. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm hopeful that it will still happen but I'm learning stuff going along the way and the story's still there. And the, the biggest risk I felt, uh, frankly, was not telling the story. And by that, I mean, Carl and I had come up with this quite a while ago. Uh, I think I mentioned this to these guys last time, you know, we had sort of lost touch and then we kind of got back in touch and, and it was almost the first thing that kind of came to both our minds, which said to me that this is a story that wants to be told. And if we don't do it, it's going to go away and it's going to go to somebody else. Leo's going to tell it next week, you know, and, and he should because we were too lazy and, and, you know, incompetent to tell it. So I want to force it out in the world in one way or the other, because I, I, I feel these characters speaking to me, not with quite the power of the Doug Bradley voice, perhaps because everyone doesn't have a <laughs> Doug Bradley voice, but you know, they're, they're real to me and they've kind of become very channeled. And especially now, if, if we had written, if I'd written the story when we originally conceived it years ago, it would have been a very different story, even though it has a very 90s vibe and a grindhouse vibe and there's lots of action and, and so forth. It also has a very, um, I would say, flow of its own, which mm -hmm. I really liked. I really liked discovering this strange pacing of this woman and what she's going through and the things she's discovering and how she's learned to stand up for herself in this totally inhospitable, horrifying situation and, and maintaining some sense of real evil and, and menace, but also quirkiness and bizarreness and, and even humor. I mean, uh, so it's a, it's a real different balance than say Jihad, which is just, you know, off the friggin' leash in terms of, of my God, where am I? You know, by page yeah. four, I'm like, you know, I'm down a rabbit hole of of utter strangeness. And by the end, I'm having editors tell me we're not going to release this book because you went too far. But uh... <laughs> yeah, that was. I, I'm glad that they that you guys fixed. You knew going into it though that that was going to be a problem. No, I, think. You, I, I didn't care. No? I just no. Oh, I, I mean, I no. We just we just we just. No, we just went in and did it and um and we got called in and we got you know we had to greg wright and i had to um had to then talk to carl potts and explain what we were going to be doing and how we were going to handle it tastefully and and uh and how it was an integral to the story and carl to his credit uh listened and and respected us and respected that we would respect him in time in turn 
you know, that we weren't just going for gristle and shock and, yeah. and, you know, and being a bunch of bully boys and saying, look what we got away with. <laughs> um, and, and I believe we handled it that way. You know, it's a, it's a shocking moment and it's, and it's horrible and it's horrifying all the things that it's supposed to be. Um, but I think it respects the book and the situation and, and, and I hope the readers. So Leo, did you have something you wanted to say before? Yeah. I could, yeah. Well, yeah. A couple times there, Jar Jar. I, I know. I, I know. won't hold it against you. He, 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 listen, he, you, you hyped him as a master interviewer. So I know. Has, I know. Uh, now I have to yeah. pull it all together. Yeah, he has, he's got to. Uh, on that point, Dan, you yeah. said that the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. That the story really wanted to be told. Is it true you, you lost the story for a, a moment? Like it was on a hard drive and it got wiped or something like that? You mean Axel's Infernal? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, um, it was, um, I had, uh, and kids, kids back up your hard drives every night, um, uh -huh. you know, suspenders and, and belts. Um, mm -hmm. I had a hard drive crash in 2001, and, um, and I lost like all my kids' photos from like the first year and a half of his, you know, life, and I lost almost every single comic thing I had ever written, you know, prior thing, like all my, whatever scripts, Daredevil, Night Stalkers, mm -hmm. hell, all the stuff I had saved gone, totally wiped unless I'd printed it out, which was rare and, and in between. And one of those was the, the big bulky presentation uh, proposal for this Axel's Infernal. Well, at oh that point gosh. we'd been calling it route 666. So, um, because I was incredibly clever in those days. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. and then I thought it was just gone. And, um, and then, um, uh, it was, this was sort of like the serendipity, like leading into, all right, do something already, uh, was, I know exactly right, Mahana, you know, it's, um, uh, and, um, and then Greg Wright is my good friend, you know, called me one day and just said, Hey, I was cleaning up my hard drive and I found this thing. Do you want it? And it was the original proposal which I had sent to him when I'd written it to get his feedback on it. And he'd given me some extraordinarily critical, scathing feedback, making it better. But he okay. had both the original one and then the one that I had revised based on his uh, on his critique. And so I had that as a jumping off point um, when I reengaged with Carl, which, was, which frankly was a miracle. I mean, I remembered fragments of it. You know, I remembered yeah. like the, 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 the gist and, and whatever. But uh, certainly having that additional tone and feeling and atmosphere and swagger, as it were, were great to have back uh, to be able to then carry it forward to this next next phase of it. That, that wow. is immersive. Yeah. Now you can go, Leo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, it says uh, you grew up in Connecticut. Where? Uh, Stanford, which is where I live now. Um, so I've been, in, I grew up in Stanford and then moved away uh, different places for a few years, mo mostly in the Northeast area, and then landed back here a, a while ago at this point. But um, uh, are you in Connecticut, Leo? Or? Uh, yeah, uh, I am. I grew up in uh, Montville. Okay. Uh, which okay. is uh, near Mohegan Sun. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I'm uh, currently uh, near uh, Mystic. I'm over in Groton. Oh, nice. All right. All right. Beautiful area. Really nice. Yeah. yeah definitely. They, they do some nice Halloween stuff up there. Yeah. They do. Yeah. yeah. A lot A lot of people give, uh, you know, Connecticut a bad rap, but, you know, I like it. Just the drivers. <laughs> just the drivers. So, Dan, just a little thing is that Leo is our gauge for, you know, how you talk, like editors talking about yeah, you went too, too hard on the strange. Leo is our gauge for when we go too far and re recommending like a gory or an intense, just a weird book. Like mm -hmm. I've counted on one hand, the amount of times he'll just start is like, Drew, what the fuck? Like, mm -hmm. just, what, 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 why, what, what did you tech I have us do? And it's usually, it's like, what he says next is like, if that's a good, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? That was great. Or what the fuck? Like, what is wrong with you? Go to therapy. Like, so Leo, when you were reading this, <laughs> yeah leo what was your reaction to this one? Oh my god it, it, it's i i'd have to say like that last scene when uh the the person got hung 
and <laughs> there was there was I was like, what the fuck? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you create a man. Yeah, man. <laughs> and that's how you do it. And that's uh, how you do it, kids. Yeah, that's but how you it, make a hand of glory. It was and, definitely a, a good what the fuck, you know. Uh, okay. your, your DG, uh, you know, your your writing is fantastic. Um, you know, I did go into it. I, I'm not a big horror guy, you mm -hmm. know, like Jar Jar. Uh, so yeah. um, <clears throat> I saw one of the more recent Hellraisers. I never saw the original. Mm -hmm. uh, and I apologize. <laughs> I, I, did not watch I at least watched the original. Huh. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, I think I watched nine. Was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And, wow. You uh, went deep. Yeah. Oh, well, it goes on forever. It goes on like more than Leprechaun, I think. I don't really? Know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, do they we, go to space? Yeah. Yes, actually, yes, they do. Actually, <laughs> they oh, do. Shit. Yes. And they went to space before Leprechaun. So <laughs> suck it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there wasn't any giant Leprechaun, but there was a laser. So they did, they did laser in space. So, but yeah, they went to space, man. This is before Jason ever went or Leprechaun. So, Trailblazers. Hellblazer did it first. Yeah, Hellblazer. Boom. <laughs> you know, God, I gotta stop creating these puns. Um, I think and, uh, Leo, it's it's no. Go ahead, please. Oh, oh no, go for it. Go for it. No, no, that's no, fine. No, I was just gonna say. Um, you know, it's it's really easy, and I've made the mistake not in this context. I don't think, but I mean, I think you know when you introduce really. I think I did it more in like a book called Night Stalkers, you, you know, um, which was like a horror book in the Marvel universe. But um, yeah, Carrie knows. I think you um, it's really easy to introduce weird elements, right? You know, like hands of glory and people hanging themselves to you're reaching up into other people and stuff mm -hmm. and just have it um, just become awfulness. Right. Look how far I'm pushing it. I'm trying to kind of offend the audience. I'm trying to. I'm trying to show what I can get away with um, or, or show that I read, you know, some dark tome and, you know, saved all the nasty bits for myself. Um, and uh, I think I was fortunate in being able to, to weave a fine line of, of going into this world and then keeping these characters by and large, the most important part of it. I mean, the, the Nightbreed, I think are, are gloriously warm characters you know and mm -hmm. i think that that helps in the in the aspect of it for me anyway so maybe that mm -hmm. made it tolerable more tolerable for you in those wtf moments yeah 100 yeah, percent. but dan should you have on the show we're going to talk about leo's childhood because there is definitely a horror movie waiting to be made but we're not going to get into that because we're trying to wrap up <laughs> so um but so the question i have is before you go is that uh, essentially, I guess, write yourself off as in what is the best way people can reach you, uh, things you're working on, that kind of deal. And uh, I don't know, anything else you want to add before, uh, you know? Sure, sure. No, I mean, again, I appreciate you guys having me on. This is a, a, a personal favorite, you know, something I've always held in high regard and was really happy to accomplish, um, especially since um, I didn't think it would be able to work. And and I I remember watching a podcast years ago where you know sometimes you Google yourself and it comes up and and I watched this guy's horror podcast and his basically the whole tenet was there's no way this is going to work <laughs> he's like reading it like in real time and then by the end of oh, it no he's kidding. like wow that really worked um, so um, I, I was really pleased to kind of re return to this this world um, uh, you know with you you folks and um, and I think. Um, I mean, as a, as a sign off, you know, people can follow me on what's left of Twitter. You know, and there is DG Chichester, um, uh, certainly the bit.ly slash Axel's Infernal for the next couple of weeks. Uh, please check that out if you can. Uh, there's a, 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 a newsletter, a storymaze.substack.com. Those are all pretty good places to kind of track me or get in touch with me. And uh -huh. uh, in terms of other things that uh, are coming up uh, with a definitive space uh, would be uh, another type of Daredevil, which is Daredevil, uh, the superhero. So there's a mini series called Black Armor, which takes the character back into a uh, almost forgotten, uh, some, some say iconic, uh, uh, more armored version of his costume 
in a kind of a retro spin with a very 90s feel and it kind of takes place in daredevil's past back in the era when i was writing it which is a four issue series and looks and i think reads uh really great it's got a, a ton of fierce yeah. adventure i'm paired with an incredible artist named netho diaz and um if you liked what i was doing then uh and uh even if you didn't and you just like daredevil and you want to get a real kick out of a pretty ripping adventure um i think uh, people will will find their their money's worth starting on november 22nd do we get exactly any spoilers? A meow is exactly i would say it yeah <laughs> any spoilers for that uh daredevil any uh who's our oh. bad um, well, uh, uh, there's a, there's some good saber tooth action. There's some good hobgoblin action. They've, uh, they're showing up. There's, uh, you know, a couple of, uh, uh, other folks we haven't revealed yet. Uh, but there's, cool. um, uh, go ahead. No, cool. No, no, yeah. I, I, nothing to say. <laughs> commenting like, Getting more excited. Of, yeah, more of giving Dan money. Got it. Got it. <laughs> support, support friends of the show. So. Yes. Well, make sure to check out the Kickstarter, everybody. It looks yeah, please neat. check it and out. I, I, I'm going to be helping out. I hope everybody. Lots of lots out. of great rewards. Lots of great <laughs> variants and stickers and, and, and stuff. Or just get the book. You know, that's good. Cool too. But as Our as we're as we're wrapping up, Dan, thank you so much. But please, no tears. That's a waste of good suffering. So <laughs> yes. Oh yes. You know, it's thank Jesus, you. I, I, Jesus wept, done. and that's it. You know, I, I'm done. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Just sign off already. Uh, but before you go, uh, we do yeah. have uh, uh, we do manage a fairly large um, horror community. So I made sure we shared it there. So uh, awesome. You know, oh, hopefully you. We'll, we'll give you some boost there. I've been sharing it in my comic group as well, trying to. Thank you, guys. I, I, really I, I like it. to get the comic. I, I, anything that I find that's worth getting made, like it, it's definitely worth getting made. We're stirring. So. We're stirring the nerds up for you, Dan. Don't yeah, worry, it's, we got you. It's it's the way it it happens. You know, you got to get people aware of it, and then it stands on its own merits. And I think it will. Don't, don't worry. If you're at Terrificon next year, we're going to try to get you a line, my man. For at least fifteen minutes. <laughs> well, I've had I've had good you know good uh, stretches of traffic and then uh, and then, yeah. then, then nothing happens you know but and then the, somebody comes by and says you're Doctor Chichester you know that's always fun when they see the DG and. <laughs> Well, I want to remind everybody you can uh, follow DG. Uh, all the information shown us up above or down below, uh, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. And uh, before we let you go, uh, you know, just so I can dork out a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, you've been in uh, marketing for 30 years. Uh, yeah, about um, since about 90, 99. So, you know, not quite uh, full, That's but it seems like 30 years. Yeah. Oh. I only ask. I, I'm in digital marketing myself, and uh, um, ah, okay, yeah. So, were you uh, working on your own, or for a for a organization, or what were you doing? Uh, I work for a uh, um, uh, uh, insurance company. Okay, uh, and uh, I was doing uh, marketing technology, and they mm -hmm. just moved me to uh, um, paid ads. So, uh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. fun stuff. Yeah, no, I was on uh, staff for a long time for um, Ogilvy and, and Mather and then uh, TBWA and uh, played different creative director, writer, chief this, chief that, you know, roles uh, across time, mostly in, in digital uh, advertising. But, uh, you know, once you hit a certain point, I feel you, you just can do anything. So that's the way I sort of look at it. Yeah, well, you got to learn it all, you know. It's, yeah, you yeah. never know where you're going to get thrown. Yeah. You know? No, no, and it's and it's um, it's it actually taught me a lot of uh, discipline. So, uh, which uh, certain aspects of my style and approach to things uh, certainly needed it. So, I feel I'm much better uh, positioned to approach things like these projects uh, today because of that. Very cool. Well, I sent you a connect request on uh, LinkedIn, and uh... excellent. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I thought, to, 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 oh, I thought you were going to ask him what he collects. I was just like, oh, we're going to finally find out if Dan collects anything. <laughs> Damn you, what, Leo. What, you, what was the over? You, you can ask that question. Uh, yeah. Leo usually asks all the guests, uh, you know, what it is that they nerd out about or if they collect anything. Like, Oh, uh, man. Over the like, years, I've collected so many things and, you know, 
if I could find every now and again, I found like an old bag of like, you know, receipts and like you realize how much money I burned through at Toys R Us and KB Toys and, and stuff. And you're on the right show. Yeah. Yes. You yeah, know, I, I feel most of the stuff got cycled out over time. Yes. Uh, there was there's a ton of Looney Tunes figures that I, I treasured forever and a day. I still have some of these great glasses, which I, I cannot part way with. Um, and um, but, you know, there's still some great um, old James Bond toys like up on the shelves up there. The, the, the thing is, like my wife took over like this half of the office space, which, you know, she's certainly welcome to. So all the cool stuff is kind of like over here that I I face. So there's really nothing, you know, behind me in that way. Um, most days nowadays, I I I, uh, I probably geek out more to crashing drones. You know, that's sort of like my my uh, I I. Uh, I work up my stress and get rid of my stress doing that when I can get work up the stress. Cause I realize, Oh, it's not coming back and it's <laughs> heading for that body of water. And that's, you know, uh, uh, DJI. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, do you, do you fly them as well? No, 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 no. I've been looking at them and trying to convince the wife that we need one. And uh... yeah, you definitely need. Them. <laughs> You've got a, the roof um, inspections are good a good way to kind of get in on it. You know, like kind of like you know we need to look at the roof and see if we need to get it repaired, and you know, and then we could do it for you know grandma or the in laws as well. So you know, that's that's a, that's a good in. Yeah, nice. Who are right? looking for snakes? Yeah, exactly. No, you know. no, no, we're not doing this. Mm -hmm. We've been good the whole. So, sorry, Dan. We've been good the whole show, Carrie. We're not saying the S word. <laughs> sorry. Don't, why it have to be snakes? Uh, yeah. Well, it, it. I. I. No. Old, far, well, just so he knows, the old farmhouse I grew up oh. in had a snake infestation problem. Ah. So, all right. Yeah. All right. I, I was killing about a dozen snakes this summer that were in the house. So, uh, Ooh, okay. Story, right. These were like these were like six foot freaking long snakes, like real snakes, not oh, like yeah. little oh, yeah. tiny little garter things. I mean, no, uh, no, this no, no snake killer over there, oh, yeah, I, yeah. and he's like walk, he's so man. nonchalant about it, Dan. He's like, oh yeah, this is my childhood and everything. I was like, Leo, Leo, this is not normal. You're talking <laughs> about killing copperheads before you had your coffee, like. Right, 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 right. Fuck, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. You do, you do acclimate yourself though. Right after a point, so you're like, ah, just got to kill a bunch of snakes this morning, and then got to mm -hmm. move on. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Zip. That's that's him. So no, next time, Leo. Yeah. We're already next, next time. time. <laughs> okay. so, oh, well, now that's why bad. Uh, we'll like let you go, DG. Uh, thank you so much, and. Uh, um, like Carrie said, I think if you hit leave studio, it should give you the link. But if you don't get it, we'll send it over to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it'll do the upload thing and I'll just leave it running, you know, for, um, you know, for uh, until it, it, uh, it says I can go away. Right. So, Perfect. yeah. Um, all right, guys, thank you again. And this is in the, in the boxes are getting very close to being solved, which is always my cue to, to leave. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> take it easy. Well, and happy Halloween to everybody. Thank well. you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. it. Much appreciate it. Glad to have you again. It was an honor. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then there that was were a lot four. of fun. Uh, oh. We almost got him out of here in an hour, and then we all had to talk to him. And then, <laughs> and then someone had to bring up fucking. Hey, Mahana. Notes. Hey, Mahana. <laughs> Thank, thanks for thanks for contributing, girl, with the sad. Oh my. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> all right. So, oh, yeah, we know. Um, <laughs> we, we're aware. We, <laughs> so your second convoy friend. Um, like, she's just making, she's just. Uh, All my you, convoy friends are married. I think you're forgetting that aspect. <laughs> listen, fantasy ha holds no limits. Okay. It is whatever you can imagine. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, well, um, before we get into the news, uh, let's just take a couple minutes for our banter because I know we didn't get a chance to do that. Uh, didn't say anything tonight. A lot I, of know, I know. I know. I just want to say uh, I'm playing Spider Man 2. Nice. Uh, absolutely loving it. It's amazing. 
Uh, amazing Spider-Man, get it? Get it. Uh, uh, play on words. Leo <laughs> did it. Uh, it's very unique. You uh, you switch mid-game constantly between uh, Miles and Peter. Oh, nice. Yeah. What uh, big bads have you fought so far? Uh, Nobody. Actually, the uh, no, no, uh, Sandman. You start off fighting Sandman. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, that's one of the things is there's some crystal that's like linked to his psyche and there's scattered throughout the um, the city. So you have to fight little Sandman, you know, all over the place. Um, and then Craven's uh, team. Uh, so Craven has like uh, some team of uh, like killers that, you know, there was a big battle in the uh, in the river. Craven. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, totally recommend it. You know. Very nice. Uh, that and Mario. So. Uh, yeah, I, I saw your post the other day. It's the best Mario yeah. game ever. Oh my god, so friggin' awesome. Yeah, it's so animated. There's like one level where uh, the uh, the piranha plants are singing. It's a parade. <laughs> oh, it's adorable. They're they're yeah, friggin' adorable. <laughs> Very cool. That just sounds yeah, cool. Yeah. I haven't played a Mario game since Galaxy, I think it was. Yeah, well, this is uh, 2D. It's more of a um, Ooh, more oh. more of a se very uh, sequelish to Super Mario World. Okay. Yeah. So more on that aspect. That's like very when cool. I was able to still play. I never owned it, but I had friends who did. That, that was that was the one with Yoshi, right? Yes. Cause they could, yeah, because my friend would, like, we'd be, we were all messed up one night and we were playing and we'd be like, hop, he hop, Mario hops off and he's like, bye, bye, have fun in the castle, have fun in the castle. And then as soon as he'd get in, he'd be like, I hope you die, I hope you die, you keep force feeding me, you made me spit everything up, you're a terrible owner, I hope you die. And then it would start and then he'd just be like oh laughing hysterically and die. Because my God, dear God, so you fun. starting a game off with immediate guilt trip? What, is your mother playing? <laughs> like <laughs> okay well i i that was just I, one of my friends who's the, you know i, I, I don't i don't really have much although apparently apparently i look good in purple it's the only banter i have is uh apparently wearing a purple suit is is fashionable so i'm like oh sweet i already have this so nice. I will say it's also funny. I went to a Halloween costume that, um, Sunday, and I was Rod Serling from the Twilight Zone, and I would just occasionally go into monologues, just you know, just sitting there, just a fake cigarette, just leave if you will. Welcome to Splash Pages, a place full of wonder, full of nerdery, full of a lot of weird shit. My God, you know, just and I can't. We kept doing it, and and I was just there before. I was like. My God, this is exhausting. How did this man do this for years? <laughs> he you got know? paid to do it. That's what it was. But um, but I did, and I will get, and I will send the photos later. I decided what my second costume is going because I'm going to a separate party this weekend uh, for for my girlfriend's relatives. I'm finally going to do Matt Foley from SNL at Chris Farley's uh, Van Down, Down by, by the, the River. river. Yep. Yep. And I am so pumped because I've wanted to do that for so long. And I'm like, let's live YOLO as you the got the suit. suit. I, I need the jacket. That's all I need. I got everything else. I just need the jacket and just, just, I'm just going to probably just I'll take a big nap and just be so energized. So I could just walk in. Well, Lodgy freaking dog. Why? Welcome to splash pages. There's Leo, there's Jeremy, there's Leo, there's Jeremy, and Gary. Okay. Are you going to work in the joke where uh, living in a van down the river is actually an upgrade now? Yes. Yeah. Well, every day. <laughs> but um, you know what other banter we could do is when we're doing the news. There we go. Oh, do we the news. news. Before and, we and do, oh, yeah. uh, before we do, uh, 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 the logo, uh, not the logo. Um, I'm okay. out of it right now. Uh, the intro. Any any uh, thoughts? Changes? I really did. Perfect. Tear to my eye. Okay. I I, I, was like, like, I was chuckling the whole time. Yeah, I yeah, started I off grooving yeah. and like it, it was great. 
Okay. Yeah, it was it was really it was nice, concise. It had the nice amount of energy and whatnot. But what we really want to know is what the fans think. Please comment below. Yeah. Tell us. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll load it separately. So you can get a chance in a van down by the river. <laughs> uh, Tom Dog will be uh, reviewing Super Mario Wonder this Thursday. Go check him out over on Real Pro. There you go. On YouTube. Yeah. Subscribe, like, then you'll let us know when you get to go see him again. I, I like how I, I feel like every show it's going to always be hey, let's try to keep this as tight as possible. And then two yeah. hours later. All right. <laughs> News <laughs> item number seven. All right. So we're just hitting the ground running. News. Boom. <laughs> DC. Okay. So this is one of my news stories. This is DC uh, announcing uh, this year for 2024 uh, their DC, um, <clears throat> their power anthology. So this was a successful anthology that they did last year, 2023. They ended up getting a second printing after overwhelming praise from both critics and fans. So this is a 104-page anthology spotlighting DC's uh, African-American superheroes. So this is going to be released January 30th, 2024. The main cover is going to be by Chase Conley. You're going to have varying covers by Jamal Campbell um, and by um, um, famous artist and Mile Milestone Media co-founder Denise Cohen who we unfortunately didn't get to interview when he was at Terrificon this year. Hopefully he'll be back next year. Mm -hmm. So the stories being is we're gonna see a new Far Sector story by writer uh, N.K. Jemsen and Jamal Campbell, which is an epilogue to the Young Animal series where we're gonna see Far Sector's Green Lantern, uh, Sojourner Joe Mullen, finally meet with Green Lantern John Stewart. So we're also gonna get stories by The Signal, The Spectre, that's when he was Crispus Allen, not when he was Hal Jordan, Thunder and Lightning, which as we know is Black Lightning's super-powered kids. Bloodwin, uh, who would everyone remember from his oddly forgettable time as part of the Justice League. Uh, Jeremy, that's the team that Doomsday tore through like tissue paper in the death ah. of Superman. Ah, yes. uh, Valzon, <clears throat> who was the Superman of Earth 2. Yeah. Uh, Nubia, who is a slightly newer character uh, created by Brian Michael Bendis uh, and more. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of talented writers, John Ridley, Brandon Thomas, Sean Martinborough, Cheryl Lynn Eaton, uh, Aletha Martinez, and then um, Joel Campbell, Evan Gallman, Carrie Randolph, Denise Cohen, Tony Atkins, uh, Isaiah Fulmore, and more. January 30th, 2024. This looks awesome. I'm super pumped for great an or anthologies with great characters and Hey, listen, uh, I'm down for good DC comics. So it looks pretty great, not gonna lie. Awesome. Yep, yep. Uh, next up, uh, looks like Jar Jar Cable. Oh, the return of Cable. Okay, you guys want the long or the short? Because the long's not too bad. I've gotten it down though. I'm gonna I, do I, the long. All right, buddy, go for it, go long. We are in the midst of a battle to protect Krakoa. This epic struggle will be narrated through two intertwined comic series, namely Fall of the House of X and Rise of the Powers of X. Additionally, there will be supplementary stories in various X series, along with the introduction of a new series called Cable, written by Fabian Nicieza and illustrated by Scott Eden. Set to debut in January, Cable follows the adventures of one of Mutantine's most formidable warriors. Mm -hmm. He is on a mission to confront Orcus in a fresh threat known as, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Neocracy? Yes, Neocracy. Neocracy? Neocracy. Yeah, let's go okay. with that. In this critical undertaking, he, he'll join forces with someone he can trust. Himself, the younger version of Cable, is making a comeback as both versions race to prevent a disastrous future from becoming a reality. The series makes <clears throat> the series marks a significant return for Fabian, who is well known for his contributions to Cable's character development during the 1990s and X Force and Cable's solo exploits, as well as the popular Cable and Deadpool series in the 2000s. Yes. Nicieza expressed his excitement, stating, It's always a delight to write Cable and a challenge and challenge him with intense physical and emotional conflicts. Given my extensive history with the character, 
it's also enjoyable to contribute to his storyline. The storyline emphasizes the urgency of preventing a bleak future from unfolding. The neocracy is on the horizon and its arrival threatens not only mutant kind, but all of humanity as well. In addition to rescuing young Nate from Orcus, Cable must confront this looming menace and eradicate it before the neocracy can take root. Is he already too late to alter the course of the future? Ba, 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 buy the book. Huh? Huh? Nicely, nicely done, Jar. Well done. Um, Fabian is always great. He writes, he's basically written Cable so much. I could feel like he could be considered the godfather of yeah. Cable stories. Um, and young Cable being a new thing, I think it's going to be interesting seeing old Cable fighting young Cable, fighting alongside young Cable, especially because at one point one was dead, but the other one was existing, which is just another reason why we really got to watch time travel and not just, <laughs> you know, just say, ah, fuck it, whatever. It happens, you know. But if you're the young me, why don't I remember telling you this? Mm. Mm, I'm old. You know, I've got the glowing eye and metal arm and a lot's been going on. I've got, I've got a lot of stuff. But, um, Lots has happened. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. Hey, Cable. Cable's back. All right. Yeah. Monday. Is back? People didn't go to streaming? Yep. Uh, Leo, next to your story, please. You and your get friend. out. <laughs> <laughs> what? That was so bad. I let Jeremy say my catch line. <laughs> so. Cut it out. Oh, I love it. But, oh, I wonder yeah. whose story this could be. Mm. Okay. I wonder. So this one is really quick. Uh, this year on November twenty second, it will be local comic comic shop day, and um, so everybody go out to your local comic shops. Uh, there are going to be some free comics out there that you can get your hands on. And uh, this particular cover, it's two covers that are put together, um, the connecting variant covers uh, for Universal Monsters Dracula Number 1. It's published by Image Comics Skybound. And the cover is by Jason Sean Alexander, who has worked on many horror projects over the years at Dark Horse, Warner Brothers, DC Hasbro, White Wolf, and some other places. So... You can try it. The, the interesting thing is going to be, can you get both covers at one shop or do you need to go to multiple local comic book shops in order to get that? Because you don't I know love, how many they're sending out. I love so. a good gimmick. Hmm. Connecting covers gets me. It, especially, yeah. especially Carrie, like this particular version of Dracula, this story is being written by uh, one of our favorite writers, um, Mr. Something is Killing the Children, James Tynion um, the fourth is writing the story. And the part of Sky Brown is that they're turning up a universal project, products and experiences and bringing these classic characters back to life. So I don't know if this is the first one or if this is the first in a series, but you know, a well-written Dracula, I mean, there's no way it can be worse than Dracula 2000, right? Yeah, we can hope. Yeah. yeah hopefully, well, it says I don't it's, think uh, anything's that bad. It was yeah. Universal Monsters Dracula number one, so maybe there'll be a bunch of different Universal yeah, Monsters. Be, I want to go to this Awesome. Okay. I'd be very much into that. What was that, Judger? Uh, my favorite is Frankenstein out of the Universal Monsters. Frank I like the little Blue Lagoon, or uh, not Blue Lagoon. It's creature from the Black Lagoon. Black Lagoon, yeah. That would have been Black a Lagoon. totally different movie. <laughs> a totally different movie. <laughs> I want you. <laughs> I swim for you. The Blue Lagoon, everyone. Stay tuned. Uh, next, Blue Lagoon. <laughs> uh -huh. next. Oh, this is one of mine. So... Uh, in Scarlet Witch, uh, which unfortunately, despite a lot of critical claim, is winding down. So in the penultimate issue, Scarlet Witch issue nine by Steve Orlando, Sarah Pacelli, and a bunch of the other creators, uh, we see a, lot, a day in the life of Wanda Maximoff. And some one of those wide adventures that, you know, this uh, famous Avenger goes on. And in addition to fighting monsters with uh, other mystical um, adventurers like Jennifer Kale and Man-Thing, 
and even helping her niece Luna stop a bit of what's called mystical gentrification. She is seen fighting alongside Sarah Rogers, aka Crus the hero crusader from Earth 9811. So uh, for those who don't know what that is, uh, that Earth was created by Jay Ferber and Greg Schimmel and made its debut in 1998's What If Issue 114. Now that was an alternate ending of the original Secret Wars, where unlike the original Secret Wars, where the heroes and villains who were trapped on Battle World went home, this one imagined ones where they were unable to do so. So they stayed on that world um, and decided to raise families. So this and that allows a new number of heroes to emerge as a new generation. And this one being Sarah, who is the daughter of X-Men's Rogue and Captain America. Hmm. So, wow. Yeah, Rogue I was Captain like, America, huh? Yeah, I was like, wow, what a, what a, That's what a, a wonderful, what a wonderful cameo, especially since we haven't seen this alternate Earth in, I believe, decades was the, yeah, the I understood. So, you, you got to love it when when series do little cute nods like that because they really do help keep the the spirit alive for certain universes. So, so a little fun fact there in case anyone's reading that Scarlet Witch series. Stuff like that makes me always want to go back and get the original to be like, yeah, this is where it all first began. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you need more long boxes in that attic. Yes, yes. Yeah. I kind of always imagine one day you'd, you'd just be able to locate one like uh, Raiders. You know, you got the, <laughs> the light from your attic. Oh, okay, there, there's my fantastic force. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So that so that's currently out. So if you like that, check that story out. Vibe. Next. Uh, Very nice. Would that be uh the staff of Jar Jar? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Ooh. smoke three blunts for the the, the god the hemp god that to which you praise. Um, he, all right. he comes uh, with rolling hands and holding hands and smoking hands. Screw that. I now have a machine. <laughs> <laughs> I got old man hands. Uh, all right. All right, old man hands. What's so, next on the news? So I have to say I was utterly confused when uh, reading the information on this. So Star Wars Ooh. announces Mace Window Django Fett series. Right. And as I read that, I thought it was a series with Mace Window and Django Fett. And I thought, <laughs> oh, God, that must be so awkward. Like, hey, I, I beheaded you, you know. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> pages upon pages of so uh it's a buddy comic. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, one had his head attached. <laughs> the other one uh, uh, lost right. his arm. Yeah. So then, then upon reading further, you realize the announcement of two completely independent oh. series in the same universe. Actually, a uh, bunch of different know. series. So, uh, Star Wars or Marvel is uh, they're removing a series right now. Bounty Hunters is coming to a close. Yeah. Uh, so in return of removing one series of course they need to add half a dozen more uh so bounty hunters is uh is going to be a new prequel series okay and it's, it's written by mark bernard and it was announced at new york comic-con okay uh, so that name may sound familiar he's the kevin smith's co-host from fat man beyond okay he's, he's also uh written for castle rock masters universe revelation treadstone Oh. And he was also listed as a producer for uh, the recent uh, um, Picard series. Okay. Um, so uh, we don't know the actual story of these yet. We just know that it's going to be a uh, new series uh, for um, uh, uh, Mace Windu. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the one that Mark Bernard is writing. Right. The, I hope uh, he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. You know, he, well, he, I, I, I'm that dork. You know, I believe it. If you don't see them actually die, then they may still be alive. That's yeah. that. That's that's fair point, Jar. That's mm. a fair point. Um, yeah. And then correct me if I'm wrong, Leo, but this is the second Mace Windu series, right? We yes. had one in 2017 that was by Matthew Owens and Denise Cohen that had the subtitle "Jedi of the Republic." Because Mace Windu is just not 
doesn't pop enough. We got to have a subtitle. Yeah, I can't yeah. keep up with the Star Wars series because they got way too many of them going. Neither, neither can I. But I, I will say I did hear that the Django Fett series that's um, launching in March by writer Ethan Sachs does have a Lennel U cover. And I heard that's pretty much. Awesome. Uh, mm. Yeah, we don't know who the actual artist will be, but the Lennon U is uh, one of their covers was shown at New York Comic Con as well. Of course. Also, also listed is uh, Thrawn Alliances mm -hmm. is being adapted to a comic book. So the oh, cool. Timothy Zahn uh, book series. And if you're uh, unfamiliar, uh, Timothy Zahn wrote, uh, it, you must Everything. know his books. Yeah. If, if like, you know, it's all legacy stuff now. It's not part of the actual yeah. canon. Although uh, they're slowly bringing bits and pieces of it into canon. Oh yeah, because we have Thrawn now in uh, yeah. in the Star Wars universe. Uh, but if you want to dig a little deeper and you don't want to read, you know, his Heir to the Empire books, uh, so Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and Last Command, uh, they released those in a graphic novel form in two thousand nine. So okay, if you wanted to pick those up before Thrawn Alliances comes out. You know, that uh, may be beneficial for you to do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and actually, yeah, here's the Django Fett cover. That yeah, like. that is really nice. Well, yeah. but, nice best car. Um, I mean, again, Lennel you, I, I mean, come on. Even if he's half I, acting, still gonna look good. Yeah. I, he I used think to that, become one of my favorites. Like, I was gonna say, I think Carrie, he's become like your your new Gimli. Carrie's a collector, <laughs> collector of the 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 artists and writers. She has, a, she, has a, yeah, she has like a little Pinterest in her mind. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I like you. You you do good. You, you, yeah. All right. Well, hey, more Star Wars. Like, we don't have enough. Yeah. Never enough. Uh, well, you know, never enough is uh, what we're getting now with uh, some facsimile editions. Carrie. Oh, yes, dear Lord. Oh, that's cool. Um, it has. It has been 40 years since the epic crossover event Marvel's Secret Wars was launched. And to celebrate, Marvel's going to go ahead and reprint them in facsimile forms uh, down to the ads starting in January. There will also be a ton of variant covers, including foils, which we do not have here because they have not released them yet, so we don't have to look into them all. Um, foil covers? What? Oh, yeah, there's yeah. going to be foil. There's going to be variants. Everybody who can possibly get their... Arm in this is gonna do whatever they can to get. We're gonna have Frank Miller event. You know, we're gonna have everybody. Um, oh God! Oh no, uh, Frank Miller, please. <laughs> no. So Secret That's Wars right. is also where we first saw Spidey in his black costume, which turned out mm -hmm. to be spoiler alert, Venom. And so Ooh. that premiered in Amazing Spider-Man number two fifty-two. And because mm -hmm. they just really like making events. Marvel is also going to be releasing facsimiles of it and the rest of the Amazing Spider-Man issues that followed it that year, along with facsimiles of the Secret Wars each month. Uh, the first issue of Secret Wars is going to hit the shelves on January 3rd, while Spidey 252 comes out on January 31st. Oh, okay, I need to say this. I didn't know what facsimile meant until they oh. started releasing these, and now I'm over it. It's a reprint. No, I, no, I, 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 but I didn't know what that meant. Oh, and now you, I'm like, oh, you youngster, you youngster. Yeah, now I'm like, facsimile, no. Facsimile. Facsimile. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we yeah. get fax machine from? Yeah. Hey, cool. Leo, you want to know another fact? <laughs> Neck. Next. Jeez. <laughs> uh, this is also me. Uh, so, because, of course, cool. DC has a book celebrating uh black history month marvel voices legend issue one will basically be ar uh, arriving um on wednesday january 31st it's the latest entry in marvel's voice series so you have an all-star amount of people uh david f walker ezra clayton daniels justina ireland uh, editor messia sean damian hill among others so amongst the stories you see there we have a story about Elijah Bradley by uh, basically in facing down the, of course, iconic 
uh, villain Crossbones. He has to explore his own family legacy and remind himself of his own destiny to save the day. Uh, Misty Knight celebrates her 50th anniversary at Marvel with the Daughters of the Dragon reunion. Um, so essentially reuniting Misty Knight with Colleen Wing. And then um, Ezra Daniels, who, uh, for uh, those who don't know his work, Doom Patrol, uh, makes his Marvel debut with a Deathlock story. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it looks like Deathlock meets Robocop. So he's always tried doing good with his Deathlock. Now he's broken beyond repair. So in order to continue the fight, he's forced to make a game-changing decision. So they're going to reveal other stories and writers and artists at a later time. But this book is coming out uh, January 31st, 2024. Um, I have to say, I've read some of this. I'm not as hyped for this as I am for the DC one. Mm. Just That's just my two cents. I'm sure these stories are just as good. Um, I don't know. I feel like I was a little bit more hyped for the DC one. I don't the know. DC one did grab my attention a lot more. Yeah. Uh, it looked like they were putting more effort into it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of, this is, I feel like this is continuing that thing Marvel does where we have a popular character. Cool. We're going to do the same character, but it's not. Yeah. They're just green arrow and Hawkeye all over again. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully with more of this revealed, our interest will be peaked a little bit more. So January 31st, everybody. A lot of books. Next. A lot of I'm sorry, I was muted and I was trying to say something. Uh, <laughs> I was going to be a smart ass and I was going to say, hey, Drew, so you mean Marvel's making a facsimile of a character? Oh. And you know what I'm going to say to that? Get out and next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Jar Jar, you got some spawn uh, stuff? It's for me, yeah. A century after the iconic debut of Todd McFarlane's Spawn and Spawn Number 1, Fans can anticipate an exciting transformation for the character in the upcoming series called Rat City, which was revealed at New York Comic Con last weekend. Mm -hmm. Building upon a storyline introduced in Spawn issue 301, this narrative introduces a fresh iteration of Spawn, symbolizing a new era in the character's legacy. This cool. transformation is significant both in terms of the character's evolution and the comic's impressive milestone as it approaches its 350th issue and journeys towards the monumental Spawn issue 400. Okay. This latest series will introduce a brand new Spawn, yet the character will maintain a direct connection to the legendary Al Simmons. Oh. As per Image Comics, Rat City delves into the story of Peter Karn, an ex-soldier from 2092 who, unlike Al Simmons, is not dead. Peter's status as a Hellspawn emerges from a unique source, the nanites within his prosthetic legs. These nanites were influenced by Al Simmons' necroplasmic detonation in Spawn 301, with Al unaware that the uh, repercussions of his actions would extend through space and time. Rat City is penned by Erica Schultz, which... She is the first woman to write a title in the Spawn series, and it boasts the artwork of Zay Carlos. And that's my story, and I'm sticking mm -hmm. to it. Uh, so basically, Jar Jar, this is Spawn 2099. Yeah, you pretty stole much. my joke. You stole it. <laughs> <laughs> Get no, I better pull this writers. podcast over. It, it is exactly Spider Man 2099. I mean, I got to say, as a Spawn fan who's been checked out for a while, I'm going to check this out because that looks great and the series. Well, you know, they're supposed to be also doing a lot uh, more with Spawn coming uh -huh. up. Uh, yeah. A lot more series and stuff. Yeah, I think they yeah. just announced a Gunslinger Spawn book as well because King Spawn yeah. has been doing really well. Scorched, like a lot. Spawn has basically been a huge uptick with it. I mean, I don't know. I know people are still buying it because they're still pumping out Spawn. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have not. I don't think I've picked one up since two fifty was mine. Yeah, same. Like two fifty, two seventy five. That was my last. I, I did pick up three hundred, but that was more because it was right. Exactly. I would <laughs> most likely do the same thing for one three fifty and four hundred because you get those are milestones. Oh yeah. But I have not been, and I used to be so invested in Spawn. I like, loved like one through 100 and something and fell mm -hmm. off around there and then tried to come back around 250. 
and then I just I didn't find the same love I had for it. Then. Yeah, it's 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 rough, but honestly, I I love this. I've always enjoyed just like what we talked about with Dan and Hellraiser and the legacy of the characters. I've always loved that there have been different spawns yeah. throughout the world, similar carry to like how there have been different ghost writers, you know. So um, I, I I like the look. I'm down to give this a, sh a solid try. That's that's my two cents. Well, it'll actually be four ninety nine. Pay it up. Four ninety nine in my hand. Little no, 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 no. Two covers, max. <laughs> oh yes. I'm here. I don't want you to put a second mortgage on your toys. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so uh, this next story made me sad. Oh. Um, so, uh, okay. Wolverine with the Infinity Gauntlet made you so, sad? Well, no, 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 no. So next year, 2024, Wolverine turns 50. Oof, that makes you sad. No, no, what they're doing to celebrate it makes them no, sad. No, what makes me sad is I was born in the same year. Oh, Really? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, old man Leo now. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> old man Leo sitting on the corner. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, Wolverine debuted in Incredible Hulk number 180 in 1974. Right. Unlike Six. the one where everybody says it's 181. Good job, Leo. 180. It's on the last page, folks. Continuity yeah. cop, Leo Pond. Yeah. Yes. Uh, six years later, he uh, started his own series, a miniseries in 1982. And for the 50th uh, anniversary, we are going to get a shit ton of covers. I want them. Well, hold on. Oh, I, I, I actually guess. want these. Along with the covers, uh, oh. it, I counted 15. I don't know if there's going to be more of them. They should have no. They I, should have done 50 covers. I think that's what they might do. Okay. Well, actually, I counted like 24 issues. I'll pull it up. Uh, but anyway, along with the covers, uh, we're going to get a special series. And I believe this is what Chris Claremont was uh, referring to at his panel on Terrificon, where mm -hmm. he was working on a special project. So uh, legendary writer Chris, Chris Claremont is going to be writing uh, with artist Jim Lee. Uh, Madripoor Knights, right? Where mm -hmm. we're seeing Wolvie meet up with Captain America during World War II to rescue a young Natasha Romanoff, right? Uh, and uh, there's going to be special reprints as well. So I'm assuming we'll get a uh, reprint of 180 and and uh, mini series and a new variant program. Uh, this all starts in January, and oh my God, they they're referring it to as the Snicked family. Yeah, and uh, and then they're calling these Wolverine, Wolverine, Wolverine covers. I was like, so he's the Canadian Beetlejuice. Wolverine, Wolverine. Yeah, I just like, I just like that they all homage old school covers. I, okay, yeah. so Jeremy said he was going to tell me what each of them were. And right, that's a Silver Surfer cover. Okay, no, that's that's that's, that's amazing. amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. So that's Infinity Gauntlet. Yep. Yeah, that's I love number one. I'm, and that's going to be on Avengers. I want to grab that one. All right. Well, uh, and that's that's the Vision one. I remember. Yeah. Yep. Enter the Vision. That's, that's Amazing Spider-Man. Right. That's Green Goblin and, and supposed to be Green Goblin and Spider-Man. That's that yep. famous cover. Yep. Oh. Um, oh, that's a uh, giant size. Yeah, giant right. size X-Men. Right. Okay. I. All right. I'd got nothing for this. That's one. Like it's like a classic X Men cover. That's just it got that's got some Neil Adams vibes to it. Mm. The big head in the background. Next, yeah, that's going to be for Black Panther number eight. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Carrie knows this one. Anybody? Have your can anybody yes. What is this? What is this? Have your surprise. Who's Rider? Volume three, issue one. Yay! <laughs> Next. That's Fantastic Four. That's yeah. their first, that's from their first appearance. So yeah. That's just Steve McNiven drawing Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah. Because it looks good. 
I don't know the homage on that one. No. Oh, that's uh, Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool one. <clears throat> oh. Another um, one. Another, that's, the, that's the amazing Spider-Man 300. Yep. yep. Right. I like the, the costume and the shine and gloss on that one. That's really nice. Yeah. I just have to say it because I say it every time this comes up, uh, my issue was stolen. Yeah. Oh, it hurts oh. me every single friggin' time. Especially because so it's so expensive now. That oh, yeah, is, I know. That's, Secret Secret Wars. Wars. that's the, the referencing the black the yeah. black uh, Spider Man suit. It's a Secret Wars issue eight or seven. Eight. Oh, that's, that's the incredible hope. No, no, no. No, no that's Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Oh yeah, you're right. This is uh Spider Man no more. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this is from the Ramita era. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, amazing Spider Man 361. Right. The Venom holding the Spider Man. Right. Absolutely. Beautiful cover by, by Leno, yeah. of course. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, from Absolute Carnage. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it's from a Carnage. It's a Carnage cover. No, Carnage USA. That's what that is. I don't know what that one is, but. That's a lot of Wolverine. That is a lot of Wolverines. <laughs> I don't know. Looks, looks uh, like one of the ones. Had, <laughs> and now, the, and oh, now the next oh. new story. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. sorry. My bad. My bad. Like, my bad. Uh, so there are only like two that we didn't know exactly where they came from. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? What does that quiz say? You're nerds. Oh. <laughs> Winners. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Issue number eight. Issue with yeah no, uh, uh, but the Snicked family no I no I, Leo just 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 don't buy I into do it. I appreciate how they did the homage for three hundred instead of having the number in the background having the Snicked back there. Yeah, that that okay. is cool. Yeah, uh, listen, it's not as bad as I thought, but I'm still not supporting it. I'm probably going to oh. get ten of them. So uh, hold on, I'm going to bring up the issues. It's going to be. Starting in January uh, with Captain America number five, Doctor Strange 11, really? uh, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, Venom, uh, then Avengers, Blade, Miles Morales, uh, Spider-Man. Yes, it's a shit ton of, uh, looks like 24. Yeah, you got Sensational She-Hulk, she Wolverine, and then ASM, Black Panther, Daredevil, Fantastic Four, X-Men, of That's course. That's the sad part that it's not all for Wolverine. Movies. Yeah. Yeah. Immortal, Immortal Thor, Spider Woman, Superior Spider Man, and Punisher. You know what they should have done is just done, you know, Wolverine oh, covers. Wait, wait. Avengers, Dead X Men, Incredible Hulk, Spider Boy. Done. Yep. Uh, they should have just done a year long event and just did I agree. Wolverine covers, you know? Yeah, maybe do it bi monthly too. And so yeah, and do a couple variants per month. Yep. You know? People that are going to be so. All. Sorry. Oh no, no, go ahead. No, it's it's, like, it's what, too much, Carrie. I agree. When, when when I started collecting comics, if I was to go and like pick up Doctor Strange number four and see like all it was was Wolverine and then there wasn't Wolverine in it at all, I would be that like happened to me. what the fuck is going on? You know, I, 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 I would have had uh, no clue if I was a newer collector. No, I, I I it's happened to me before. You pick up a Batman comic, Green Lantern's on the comic cover you go to read it and there's nothing about green lantern in here at all this is nope. bullshit false uh, advertising well, I, I, we, <laughs> and then you realize it's a variant cover honestly it's just it's just a variant overload and it's yeah. it's it's too much so just like what we talked about i won't support it but i just i well i was telling yeah. carrie uh, i think it was last night um I was looking at new comics for this week that were coming out and every single comic has at least like four variants to it. It doesn't matter. It's not like they're number ones or anything like that. It's they're just variant overload. Yeah. It's too much, man. And exactly. it's like that for all the publishers. Everybody's yeah. guilty. Yeah, exactly. It's just too much. So, you know, our way of saying no is not buying it. Right, Leo. I'll try. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, next. Uh, actually, hold if on. If I can find somebody that's selling all those covers in one bunch for a, a decent price, I might get it. Uh, here are all the issues that have variants this uh, week alone. 
No, we didn't even oh. see it. Oh, God. Why? You made it a reality, buddy. Yeah. Look at that. Ooh, Detective Comics 1074. No. Nope. <laughs> you do Detective oh, and Batman? Yeah. We talked about No More Hate. I, I haven't picked up a detective since New 52. Holy fuck. This is insane. Ooh, that's a cool one. Actually, yeah, it is. I'm 58. I like when they do that negative space thing. Yeah. This is also Independence as well. Immortal Thor is getting a special variant. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Your point we'll, we'll stop. That. Overloaded. You're still All right. going. That's <laughs> All okay. right. Next. This yeah. is so much fun. All right. On November 29th, X-Men Blue Origins number one will be hitting the shelves to tell the true origins of Nightcrawler with much Mama Mystique love involved in a one-shot written by Cy Spurrier with art by Wil Wilton Santos and Marcus Tu and a cover um, by Francis Manipal and a variant cover by Russell Dowderman. That's the variant. Um, this is going to be running alongside Spurrier's Fall of X series, Uncanny Spider-Man, which was released already. Um, the issue one was on September 20th. Uh, mm -hmm. So Kurt Wagner appeared first in Giant-Sized X-Men uh, back in 19, May of 1975, written by Len Wein. Wein? Wein? Wein. Um, okay. Well, I think so. Um, that's and his origin said. has been played with by everybody who's ever written them. Uh, so far, pretty much the only agreement is that he is the son of Mystique and Azazel and is a devout Catholic. Um, back as far as 1981, Chris Claremont, who created Mystique, a.k.a. Raven, Raven Darkholm, and Destiny, a.k.a. Irene Adler, who guesses from the Sherlock universe as well, which had Mystique posing as Sherlock, in disguise every now and then. Um, they were supposed to be lined up to be lovers, and they were going to have Raven become a man, and together they were going to father and be the biological parents of Nightcrawler. However, wow. the uh, comics uh, code authority at the time said, no, 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 no. That ain't going to happen. So we've had all these different changes, and now finally... Um, we're size courier is going to take on and uh, since they can be a couple, it is going to be revealed exactly what Destiny's role was in the affair between Mystique and Azazel. And uh, we will see then what she has to do with Nightcrawler. Um, so mm -hmm. there's they're basically retconning everything according to this. And it's going to just be a nice little one shot this is exactly what you need to know about Nightcrawler and Raven and this. And this well. is by this is uh, by Chris Claremont. No, no this, this is, is by Size Career. Oh, my bad. Yeah, who's been working on the character for quite a bit now, and he's doing great work with that Uncanny Spider-Man yeah. series we've been I've been mm -hmm. raving about with you guys. So definitely keep an yeah. eye on this because he's talking about essentially this is going to be the definitive origin like essentially there's been a lot of twists and turns with this origin over the years they want this to kind of be the, the the concrete one that kind of explains it all and then establishes this is the true origin so gotcha so this is that setting it straight so okay hey why not looks cool to me one like and done on, on both of the covers yeah oh yeah it's interesting they had the two different artists work on it. I believe it was um, Marcus Marcus Toe or two. Uh, oh. Okay, Marcus Toe did uh, only the first couple pages, I think, and then the rest of it was done by Wilton Santos or okay. reverse that. But no, there's some pretty neat art on the pages there. I, I think it looks really beautiful. So hey, all for it. And they okay. only have one variant. Uh, we we need to stop skipping holidays. Like, why the fuck are we talking about Valentine's Day already? Okay, but what? this is a great <laughs> story. No, yeah, I'm with you. Why does it need to be discussed Valentine's? now? No, we no. But, but about Thor's when Day. you no, no, Leo and Leo and Jeremy, I agree with you. But when you hear this pun, 
you're going to like, it's called DC's how to lose a guy gardener in 10 days. Ah, okay. So I agree with you. It is a little much, but this is an 80 page one shot published in Valentine's day, a bunch of characters going on dates, successful or not. You're going to have Marguerite Savage, Dennis Hopeless, Aaron White, Brendan Hay, George Mann, Danny Lore, Alex Gare, and others. And then you have Marguerite, Ivan Sharon, Emil Sanipo, Benada, Rivas, Ted Brandt, Rio Stein, Leonardo Rodriguez, a hilarious cover by the great Amanda Connor, a variant by Ariel Diaz, Christian Ward, and then Dustin Nguyen. Uh, it's only $9.99. And I have to read the synopsis because this is killing me. Romance is rarely a simple affair. Love is almost always to follow some sort of conflict. Whether you're Plastic Man twisting yourself into knots trying to please someone, or The Flash traveling back in time just to make a catastrophic 51st date perfect, or even a lonely robot who just can't seem to find love unless it's male from a computer screen, like Red Tornado, love is actually a pain in the 27 dresses. So in the grand tradition of these dating conundrums, a la rom-coms of the 90s and 2000s, we are proud to present eight new stories about love and trying to find it in this zany world. So $9.99 per variant? Per variant. Per variant. Which one are you going for, Leo? You can only choose one. I, If I had to choose one, I'd go with the Guy Garner one. I'm, I'm on the Nightwing. Yeah, yeah. but is... Is Nightwing currently with Batgirl? Like, yes. I have no idea. But I'm reading the series. All over his booty. I'm I'm reading the series. He he is with Batgirl right now. Oh, okay. But he's still on good standing with Starfire. So I was like, okay, so we made that work. Um, so since I, I learned recently, and I asked you about it, his butt cheeks have been named. Which one was she touching on the cover? They have been named. What? Yeah, I was really confused on a Reddit post where they were talking all about Nightwing's butt, and apparently it's like become such a thing that somebody named each one, and they have like conversations about them as if they are like characters themselves. I, I know they made fun of it on uh, Harley. Harley, yeah, Harley. yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, they they were part of it was joking, but part of it was just like. Oh yeah, we really like so and so. Well, I can't. Remember. That is something I'm not going to Google for you, Carrie. So. No. Okay. And, and, uh, and, I'll look at it. Oh now. my God! There's a whole like. Oh there, my God. There's, yeah, there's a there's a wormhole or jar, there's a hole to go down here. Jar, jar, jar. Yeah. Close the computer. I don't want you. To, you want to get infected. Oh my God! <laughs> they, no, they, close it, buddy. Like, Nightwing's uh, no, Nightwing's no. buck, uh, but a thick history of Dick Grayson's butt. <laughs> I'm just like, what's going on? Yeah, that's that's what they call on the street, Thick Grayson. Thick Grayson, THCC. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, wh so while you don't go down that line, everybody, <laughs> February 6th, that book is dropping. I'm going to check it. I don't know if I'm going to buy it, but I'm kind of interested to check it out because that pun is great. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say. And Guy Gardner doesn't get used enough. He really doesn't. Yeah. But it took, he got taken out in one punch. But I, Leo, I think that's all the news. Uh, Carrie added yeah. some other stuff. What did you add? Oh, oh no. my God. What the hell? No? That was all the stuff. Yeah, don't put it up now. That, well, oh, okay. I mean, we can. It was all the extra Dan stuff if we were going to go over oh, it. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Stuff for Daredevil and for Axel's Infernal if we had time. But you should have brought we, it we, up. We did. <laughs> we, we had the time and we did it. We could. No, no, no. I, I know. The, the, the yeah. images, you can click the button. You're allowed to so, click the button. <laughs> so, okay, well, let's do this I, one because this was a really cool one. This is the one that he was talking about um, with all – we discussed this with him, and he had a, a better image of it that didn't have the um, Axel's Infernal part on there. But this was like the weird hellscape that the truck is like driving out of with all sorts of images of different monsters from different hells and stuff that – they're they're trying to get out of so they can move on and do their deliveries and things like that. But that, that's a sample of the artwork and maybe a couple others. Um, I feel with just, Dan's work, it, it's it's educational and entertainment. Agreed. It, 
it was a, it was a really good time having him on the show and uh with that and we'll give you guys a real quick one sneak peek of just the ink of upcoming daredevil this is his upcoming daredevil armor black armor stuff hey yes. uh carrie um if you have some free time you know what would be awesome uh, each of those images you have, I would say share them on Hellfire, do each one as like a post and then like a small blurb about what the image is and then just reference his uh, Kickstarter. Oh. And hey, DG has a Kickstarter and in on so many days. Um, Absolutely. Well, like, that <laughs> maybe do each one like daily. And that is a conversation we will have after the show. There we go. Uh, we'll, wrap uh, yeah. up, we'll wrap it up. Last item I'm going to add. This just popped up today. Uh, did you know the Marvels uh, has a uh, record? It's uh, no. record breaking. I don't know why they. Hey, Jabo. Hey, Jabo. I'm sorry, what? They have a so so uh, the Marvels is breaking a record. Okay. It's not even out. Yeah, but it's breaking a record for the uh, <clears throat> the shortest Marvel movie. It's clocking oh, really? in. Really? Yeah, an hour and forty five minutes. Wow, that's that still short. long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just over two hours. Uh, I got to leave my house still for that long. No way. Yeah, yeah, Leo. You know what's going to be considered a record? We do a Marvel movie that's ninety minutes. That that'll be a record for me, but just like we're trying to do longest show. Yeah, I know. Uh, we're gonna wrap things up. I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. You know me. Just Google me. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, Jar Jar. Hey, it's Jar Jar. Follow me on Facebook. I'm Jeremy Courtney. Check out Comic Book Lovers Buy Sell Trade and Auction House, where you can buy, sell, and trade all of your geeky stuff. Um, also check out the re, uh, education of Nancy Ann Ritter on Spotify and wherever else you can find podcasts and, oh, are, are we doing a midweek geeks this week? No, no. Oh, uh, so I won't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carrie. Hey everybody. Uh, you can find me and Reddit Oscar either here on the Darking on Splash Pages and sometimes Midweek Geeks. Um, otherwise, look at Carrie Sanders on Facebook. If you see an, a crow, that is me. All of my links are there um, over at Owlite and here. And yeah, you can just find me there. It's fun. I, I write things to me on any of my people, and uh, I'll Girl Friday, I'll get back to you probably, and then let me know that you spoke to me. So. Awesome. Oh, Mr. Drew. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Drew, and uh, <laughs> as you saw there, that's my Instagram, Ghostbusterman 1984. Um, and just if you want e Le and if you want Leo's email address, message me on Insta, and say that you saw me say that, and you'll get that and more. But yeah, uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. I'm working on writing regularly again for Screen Rant, so. Those will be all posted on my page and such. Um, working on a lot, keeping busy, and always working to make this the best thing you could do on Tuesday night. Awesome. With that, we'll catch you later. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.